Hey everyone, welcome back to science. We are going to continue our uh, chapter two lessons today, moving on to lesson 2.3. And we're actually gonna be going back and doing a second read and zooming in on a couple of pieces from uh, the article we read about last time. So if you remember that article, there were three different species that it talked about. There were the Galapagos tortoise, the polar bears, and then some flightless ducks. During our last lesson, I read about the polar bears, um, and today we're going to zoom in on the, that reading again, um, and actually we're going to take that opportunity to look a little bit closer at the Galapagos tortoise, so that way we can uh, learn about a different animal. But before we get to that reading, let's go ahead and move into our warm-up for today. So today's warm-up is a little bit trickier than some of the ones that we've had in the past. So please make sure that you are taking your time as you're going through this. You've got an image over here and there's going to be a short little section of reading um, that I will read through with you here and then going to want to uh, ask you to write down your answer. Uh, so if you haven't already, what I would love for you to do is pause the video, uh, grab a piece of paper and a pencil so that you can start to jot down some of your ideas for this warm-up. Um, and like I said, I am going to read through it and then give you an opportunity to pause and uh, answer this question right here in the orange writing in the box. So we've got a couple different uh, frogs here. Uh, we've got our descendant species and our ancestor population. So the, the text says, imagine a population of frogs that live in the forest. Frogs have a green coloring on top that helps them blend into the forest so that they are not noticed by predators. Imagine that half of the population stayed in the forest and the other half of the population moved to the hills above the forest, which are drier with some brown grass and brown soil. So in this image up here, you can see those two different descendant species splitting, the population that went to the hills and the population that went to the forest. But what we don't know is what they look like. So this question is asking you to think about that and think about which of those two populations, population of the descendant species one or population of descendant species two, is going to have the most change over many generations. So take a second now, go ahead and pause. If you haven't gotten your pencil and your piece of paper ready for today, you can also grab that during this time. So go ahead and pause the video here and we'll jump back in and move on to our lesson um, once you're done with that. Okay, so uh, again, if you did not get a chance to fill out the warm-up, please make sure you pause and go back in the video to complete that. We're going to move on to looking at this reading from last time in lesson 2.2. But now during our second read, there's going to be a few things that we're really going to be dialing in and trying to dig a little bit deeper in that article. Strong readers don't necessarily always read an article one time. A lot of times I'll read it once just to kind of get the general idea and then go back and start to look at things a little bit more closely and really focus in on what they're trying to learn from that reading. So uh, these are the things that you're going to want to consider as you're going through the article for that second time today. And we're going to talk in a minute here about some special highlighting that we're going to do while we're going through to kind of practice that skill of annotation as we work through our article. But these are some questions that you're going to want to answer at the end. So I always think it's best to know what you want to answer before you read. So let's go through these really quickly. These are going to be some pieces that you're going to want to keep in the back of your mind while we're going through. So the first thing you're going to want to be thinking about is how did the original population that first became the two descendant species first become separated? So how did the two species that the article is about become separated? Second question that you're going to want to be thinking about is one of the populations in all of these three examples had structures that changed over time. Describe the changes that happened and why they happened. That why is really an important part. And then lastly, 
This question is asking you about the population that changed over time. The third question is going to ask you about what did the other population in the article uh, say, what was remaining the most stable? And if you remember back to last lesson, that word stability just means that it is uh, a, that it has a structure that is staying the same. Oops. All right. So just put this up here so that you can kind of think back and remember that uh, some of you, your teachers may have some really great reading strategies that you want to uh, be practicing as you are going through. Today, what I'm going to be doing, and if you have the reading at home, again, want to really stress before we jump in and do this together, that you might want to pause and you might want to work on completing that reading uh, independently. I am especially going to be focusing today on uh, reading and annotating the text. So if you are going to be doing that independently, there is a, a special way that I want us to be thinking about our annotations for today. So as we're reading, one of the things we want to be thinking about is which of the populations was staying stable. And as you go through, you can use um, the highlighting tool if you're accessing that in Amplify, or as we go through, we're going to be highlighting things that are staying stable with the color of blue. Um, things that are going to be changing are going to be another thing that we might be looking for. So if they are changing, if the structure is changing within that population, um, what we are going to do is we're going to be highlighting pieces of the text in a red color to distinguish those places uh, where we are seeing change in our species, which as we know, that change is evolution. So that sort of second active reading thing um, tip is what we're going to be working on today as we go through this recording. Okay, so I've got our annotations marked up here at the top of the screen. If you forget, remember, as we're going to be reading through this, we're going to be thinking about uh, highlighting some areas where we might see that the population is changing. That's going to be the things that we're highlighting in red. Um, and then if the population is actually staying the same, we're going to be highlighting some of those things in blue. If you want to, uh, just as a reminder, this is our second read of this article. This was the introduction. If you'd like to go back and skim the introduction, you can go ahead and do that. I'm not going to read through it in this video because uh, I want to jump into reading about the Galapagos tortoise, which we read last time about the polar bear. Uh, but just so you can get an experience kind of hearing about some different uh, species, we're going to read about the tortoise this time in this video. But if you want to look at maybe the flightless duck or you want to look at the polar bear again for your second read through, that is totally fine. You can do that and then pause the video and meet up with us at the end. I will click through those slides again if you don't have the access to the reading at your house. But I'm going to start as a group here and we are going to be reading about the Galapagos tortoises. And before we get started, just want to remind you the things that we're going to be thinking about is how did those two species become separated? And then the reason we're using these annotations is that for, these, for this question number two and question number three, it's asking us about how did the structure um, of those populations change over time. So let's go ahead and jump in and start to read about the Galapagos tortoise which are pretty cool animals. They're huge tortoises if you've ever seen one at a zoo. Um, they're really, really cool. So Galapagos tortoises have lived in South America for many millions of years. About three million years ago, some tortoises living in South America floated about 1,000 kilometers or more than 600 miles across the Pacific Ocean from the mainland of South America to the Galapagos Islands. Unlike turtles, tortoises can't swim. So once they arrived on the islands, the tortoises never left. Quite a journey there. The population of tortoises that have floated to the islands became permanently separated 
from the population of tortoises on the mainland. The islands had different environments than the mainland environment, so different traits were adaptive and helpful for their survival. For the island tortoises than the mainland tortoises. Some of the islands had desert populations, uh, excuse me, desert environments where food was scarce. Over many generations, the populations of tortoises on the Galapagos Islands evolved special shells, at, as well as changes to some other body structures. So if you started to pick up on that, that that is a uh, sentence that we're going to want to stop and highlight, good job. Um, because we're starting to talk about that evolutionary process. And the tortoises that were on the new island have evolved special shells. So I'm going to go and highlight that with red because that's something that we are noticing is changing for those lucky guys that floated to their new island. And then it also says that there are some changes to their body structures. So let's continue to read. And since we did hear a little bit about those changes, maybe we will start to hear about some of the things that are staying the same for the tortoises that didn't get so lucky as to float to their own little tropical uh, vacation on the island there. So next sentence says, meanwhile, the environment on South American mainland didn't change much over time. So the structures of the tortoise population there remained relatively stable. So let's go ahead and highlight that in blue. The structures of the tortoise population that remained was relatively stable. And one question I'm asking myself is what, is, what are some of those structures that were remaining stable? So hopefully, as a reader, you're starting to think about some of those things that can help you as we continue through the article. They stayed the same as the structures of their common ancestors. Today, the structures of the Galapagos tortoises are so different from the structures of the mainland tortoises that they would not reproduce with each other even if they were brought back together. These two populations that once came from a shared common ancestor population are now considered a different species. All right, on to the second part of this reading about the tortoises, which is that natural selection acted on the populations of tortoise in mainland South America and in the Galapagos. All tortoises have a random chance of being born with a mutation that can change the shape of their shells. Millions of years ago, Galapagos tortoises were born with this mutation and had shells that curved upward at the neck. The curved shape made for more space when the tor tortoises' necks and allowed them to reach up high. This mutation was an adaptive trait on the Galapagos Islands with desert environments where food was scarce. It helped tortoises with a curved shell survive by reaching leaves higher up and getting more food. So I'm gonna pause because I heard something in there uh, that was talking about the specific shell shape and that had to do with a change. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight that in red. The curved shape that they have is um, enabling them to reach up higher for their food. I'm also going to, while I'm thinking about it, uh, you're going to notice that this image down here gives us a good visual. It's a great text feature to help us um, as readers start to kind of visualize that change that was happening over time that occurred because of that mutation. So um, just be thinking to yourself how this is going to help us as we answer those questions here in a moment when we're done reading. As this mutation for the curved shell was passed down by tortoises that had been born with it, curved shells became more common in the Galapagos turtle, tortoise excuse me, population over many generations. Changes that result in one species becoming two did not just happen with one generation. The Galapagos tortoises did not become a new species as soon as they arrived on the island. It took a long time. Speciation takes place slowly as mutations build on one another, adding up to big changes in structure. So before we move on, I highlighted this um, text feature right here. You may also want to go ahead and highlight this little guy right here. 
because one of the questions that I never had answered directly from the reading was, what was the shell? What did it look like before those tortoises drifted off to the island? And if you look over here, you're gonna see that this Chaco tortoise from the mainland of South America is the closest living relative to the Galapagos tortoise. So really here we can see the thing that stayed the same for them. Their shells are not gonna have this sort of saddle back pattern here that enables the tortoise to reach up and grab some vegetation that's higher up for them in their desert environment. All right, so now that we've wrapped up our reading and gone through and zoomed in with a little bit closer of a lens, thinking about some specific changes to the population and why those changes occurred, I want you to pause the video now and take a second to answer these three questions. Um, if you were someone who did not want to read about the Galapagos tortoises and you didn't have access at home, what I'm going to do is click through the rest of the article. If you read about the polar bears, you're going to want to answer these three questions when you get done reading about them. If you read about the flightless ducks, you're also going to want to read about these three questions. Um, but if you read about the Galapagos tortoises, go ahead and pause here. For those of you who would like to use this video to complete the reading for either the polar bears or the flightless ducks, I'm going to slowly click through those so that you could pause and read independently. If you're pausing to answer these questions now, just resume the video when you're done and you'll see me clicking through the slides to get to the final piece that you need to do for today's lesson. All right, so before we sign off for today, just want to remind you to make sure that you took the time to answer these three questions for whatever species you um, looked at for the second read. And then as we finish up today, I want you to go back and see if you can find someone at your house, call a friend, use those annotations that we made in the blue and the red to share with them what you learned from your reading. Why did the two species end up becoming so different? Um, and what were some of the structural differences that enabled them to be so different? So this is the last slide for today. I'm gonna go back to these questions. So if you did not get a chance to finish those up, go ahead and do that now and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.